Hi. Recently, several of you have asked me about my kayak. So I thought I would do a review of my Ascend H10 kayak. Just to start off, uh, I just wanted to tell you that all of the years of kayaking with both ocean kayaks and the lake kayak, with both on the ocean and on the lakes, with high speed power boats passing by with waves, I have never flipped over nor water came in to a dangerous level at all, though it got minor splashes. The most vulnerable point during the kayak is getting in and out of the kayak. And secondly, if there is a strong current from waves and rapids, the most vulnerability is panicking in such a situation. Sometimes you just can't help it. The best thing to do is to avoid those rivers with rapids or strong tidal rivers like Merrimack River. My objective for this video is my personal review and a journey in selecting and modifying my kayak for the lakes and not for the ocean. Why did I choose this kayak? To photograph loons and the eagles. So why did I choose ASEN H10? a fishing kayak. It is very short, 10 foot plastic kayak, thus weighing 55 pounds with 400 pounds capacity. It is very wide, a 31 inches and a hybrid kayak at 2024 cost of $650 with paddle and a dry bag from Bass Pro or Carbella. Let me explain to you why I chose uh, this particular kayak. First and foremost, I need a stable kayak to protect my valuable asset, camera gears from sinking on the bottom of the lakes, the worst fear of photographers. Secondly, I had to choose a kayak that has a minimal rotational motion, side-by-side -side motion while photographing and I'll explain to you uh, more detail about that. And the stability is uh, achieved through a, what they call tunnel hull style bottom design. And if you see most kayaks, it's round shape or kind of V-shaped on the bottom. Whereas on this kayak, there's actually a tunnel, okay? And this tunnel is approximately inch and a half or two and it goes from the beginning to the end. However, it does have a streamlined bow and at the back. And also it has this uh, streamlined aerodynamic uh, so the water could flow in. But if you look at the design, it, it's curved concave in along with this 90 degrees uh, tunnel prevents the kayak or minimize the side to side motion. And therefore it's stable, both in uh, limiting the uh, rotational motion. And this particular design also allows for a kayak to uh, uh, go straight forward. Uh, if you have experience with kayaking, uh, sometimes it's hard to keep the kayak straight um, or you have to get a long kayak, or you might even have to put a rudder. This kayak, you don't have to worry about that at all. Now, as I told you, this kayak is a fishing kayak, and uh, the specification from the manufacturer says you could stand up and fish. Now, let me explain to you what rotational motion is and it is critical to understand. Now I have here a 400 millimeter prime lens, very heavy and very long. And uh, what I mean by that is rotational motion is this. As soon as you're done with paddling and you lift your camera up, and you're about to shoot like this. And what happens is 
a lot of uh, kayak with a uh, round bottom or even slight V motion does this. So I, well, I can't do it with uh, my kayak because it's flat bottom. But what happens is that you go to swing like this and it is virtually very, very difficult to aim and focus uh, those waterfowls that are on the surface of the water with this type of motion. It makes you really unnerving um, because you're off balance. Um, so you, that makes it even the worst case. So that's what I mean by having a uh, rotational stability on this kayak. Before I start talking about the comfort of this kayak, just want to show you on the front, there is a, um, uh, a separate chamber and it has the mesh uh, cover and it doesn't prevent the water, big water from coming in, but it does prevent splashes from coming in. And there's this huge uh, 24 inch by 47 open a cockpit uh, in the middle where your chair is, and I'll talk about that more. And the last section is uh, more storage room, uh, third uh, section. And this also comes with a wired mesh uh, cover. So inside, there is a uh, two dry bags, pretty big. And then right to the left side of that, there's a footrest and that's adjustable. Same thing on the other side. Now this chair, is a removable and also adjustable. You can move back and forward. Uh, same thing as the uh, footrest so that you could adjust it based upon your height and length of your legs. But um, the backside could be adjusted, uh, removable. And I would have to say this is the most comfortable uh, seat I have ever sat on a kayak. And the reason is because it's metal framed and it's a mesh and there's a um, little pad on the back, but that's really not the big point. There are a place for holding two water bottles. So that's very, very convenient, but trust me, this is the most comfortable chair I could uh, find. And it's extremely wide. Now, as a photographer, one of the important thing here is the center section. Because it is uh, has a tunnel design, the center part is uh, about two inches higher than the edges. Now, why is that important? Because if you do get some water in, the water accumulation will not occur at the center where you would store your camera or your bag. Um, I have used the bags in the past and it fits nicely, but recently I opted to buy a cheap uh, camera backpack rain cover and I just put it in there and then uh, just put a, uh, just cover over it so that it prevents splashing. If you do flip over, um, no matter what you do or what kind of system you have, unless the cameras are inside the dry bag. It's really uh, no use, so I don't use it. I don't use a dry bag. Just as a reference, uh, here's a huge prime backpack, prime lens backpack I put in the middle and there's enough space to put legs in between, I mean on the side. But here it is, one could uh, put the uh, thing in access the uh, lens. Our option is to uh, buy a, a less than 20 bucks water uh, repellent or waterproof uh, um, camera backpack rain cover and I just put that in the middle and then uh, I put my prime lens or whatever lens that you have and this is how it's stored and basically when I go like this it just uh, prevents any kind of splashing and the important thing is that loons could, uh, or eagles could appear right around the corner. Uh, so you really have to have quick access to the uh, camera. So this is how I do it. 
There's ample room uh, for storage of such kind. Now uh, let's talk about minuses. Uh, what you're trading off stability is the speed. It's a very slow kayak. It's wide and has a lot of surface area in which water has to flow through. And that um, you have to work harder to go, get to the place that you want to get. But if that's not important for you, you just want to relax and not to speed directly toward a loon or whatever. Um, if that's not a problem for you, then it's uh, not an issue. It is not for open ocean, uh, but safe tidal river like Essex River and lakes. By the way, um, just as a side point, if the wind on the lake is greater than six miles per hour, then I advise whether you have this kayak or other kayak, don't go out. You might have a problem. Now, if you do flip over, which I have never done, uh, this particular design, water will fill or flood uh, because it has a open cockpit. But when you buy this, at the back of the, uh, the hull, there is a, a styrofoam or a foam uh, buoyancy unit and same thing at the front. But I took them off. Um, the reason why this unit has a black bottom is I've installed um, one inch closed celled foam uh, throughout to um, increase the buoyancy in case uh, it flips over. The goal is not to um, prevent water from coming in, but to keep the uh, kayak afloating. Well, let's say you do fl uh, flip over and the uh, cockpit is uh, flooded with water. Um, there's a tons of um, YouTube video you could watch how to uh, flip the boat and get back on. So I don't want to focus on that, but I don't really like the uh, um, kayak pumps that are available. I think they're awkward, cumbersome, and it does not uh, do high-speed um, bailing. So what I do is I got this um, um, a scoop, which I attach to the kayak, and I use this to um, scoop the water out. Now, some people use a one-gallon uh, milk jug and cut that and then use that as a, a baler. So there's a lot of different options. Also, uh, besides the uh, a foam insulation that I put in, um, you could buy from Amazon the um, uh, inflatable balloon that fits into uh, front and back of the kayak uh, to give more buoyancy. You could do that. Uh, I just opted not to. It's just a um, place for mold to grow and um, um, you know, sometimes you have to deflate, inflate, clean, all sorts of things, but uh, they are available. Just as a reference, um, a few days ago, I went out on the kayak with two uh, camera bodies and two lenses. Uh, one was a prime lens and then uh, much smaller, a 200 to 600 millimeter zoom lens. And the reason why that's so convenient um, the 200 and 600 zoom is that a lot of times um, loons just pop up right next to you uh, without you ever expecting it. So um, in a close-up shot, um, it's not that important on the megapixels, uh, but be able to um, focus and all of a whole body uh, in frame. So that's it. Last subject, which is sort of uh, unrelated to this uh, video is uh, hauling kayak on and off the car at the lake. Not at home when your husband or wife or significant others could help you, but also uh, various different systems that are available when you're home. There is really no easy solution. Um, it, in fact, it's the worst part of owning a kayak, which is uh, especially loading kayak on the lake, nearby lake. Well, the best option is for you to own a lakefront house where you just um, uh, park your kayak at your dock. 
but most of us don't qualify for that. So um, you can get a folding kayak um, that weighs uh, much less and it could be stored and carried inside of pretty much any size car. That's probably the easiest way. The second option would be to have a pickup truck. You can load on the back um, as long as it's not a big uh, kayak. Um, and third thing is um, a trailer to store the kayak, but you need a um, uh, state uh, plate have to, and have to register and pay minimal annual fees. And lastly, most importantly, you have to learn how to drive a, a trailer, which is not easy. Lastly, you can get a lift assist, such as Thule Hullivator or Two Enjoy, that's T-O-O-E-N-J-O-Y, or Yakima Showdown or Easy Rec Pack. That's E-Z-R-E-C-P-A-C-K. Uh, they range from uh, around 500 to a little bit more than $1,000. So as I age, uh, I think I'm gonna get one of those options uh, next year. So thank you for listening and hopefully um, you enjoyed uh, this uh, review.